Which is a good segue, right? Because you, you need a tool that, to remove them. And I think the first, you know, go-to for people is tweezers because that's what they have handy. But th those don't do a great job, right? I mean, well, and I happen to, I just happen to have a few of these. Uh, I was kind of wondering if you might have something there. I happen to have a few of these over here. I'm sorry for the, <laughs> the, uh, the audio here. But first of all, I just want to say that every single reputable expert organization that I have done research on has concluded that fine tip or sharp pointy tweezers are your best bet when it comes to removing ticks. No reason to complicate the removal process. It is a simple idea, but you have to do it correctly. Um, a lot of people don't realize that they're actually, uh, they can actually make themselves sick or exposed to these, these pathogens by incorrect tick removal. And the, some of the things that constitute incorrect tick removal would be overly agitating the tick, mm -hmm. crushing or putting pressure on the tick's abdomen, tearing the tick and exposing the bite site, your fingers or any other mucosal membrane to what I refer to as yucky tick juice. Right. which is anything liquid that comes out of this tick from any part of its body. The saliva is the biggest offender, but the pathogens reside in the midgut or the belly of this tick. Mm -hmm. And once it's started to feed, it becomes like a water balloon. Basically, it's a water balloon with a hollow straw sticking out of it. And you don't want to tear it or, or do anything like that. Right. Now, Years ago, when some of these, uh, what I like to call tick removal gadgets were created, um, their, really their goal was to help people with their, their pets, uh, especially their dogs. Right. Uh, because dog ticks get on dogs, they're large, they get engorged, typically don't find them until they're, you know, like the size of a blueberry or mm -hmm. they're, uh, you know, they're, they're big. And, and dog ticks really don't pose too much of a threat at least around here, they have the potential to carry Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, but it's extremely rare in our area. Um, doesn't mean that you shouldn't still be uh, alert and aware in other areas of the country where it's more prevalent, but um, they really didn't focus too much on worrying about exposure to illness. They were focused primarily on removal of a tick, period. Right. So these devices, huh. this is something called the tick key. Mm -hmm. And the tick key would shows that you should, you put this over the tick and pull it, which then would mm -hmm. essentially come over the tick and you're, you're pulling it sideways yeah. out of the skin, that which sounds you terrible. want to break off this, right. this mouth part, which is the, the middle piece here. That's the yeah. hypothenum, which is like that hollow straw. Yeah. So you want to avoid that. Also, uh, I, I wanted to show you some nymphal ticks, but I don't think we can effectively do that here with this, with our setup here today. But I will attempt to show you those nymphal stage deer ticks. Can you see them okay? On the right side, yes, the little dots. Yeah, those little dots there, and this is a push pen. Yeah. So you can see the difference. Right. Now, I've had these ticks feed in my belly button, okay? And I would, I would challenge anybody, anywhere, to use this device oh, yeah. to get into your belly button. It's like a backhoe trying to get on this. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you got to take out a weed with a backhoe. Yeah, you can't effectively get it into the slot. So yeah. you're putting it over the top, and now you're crushing that tick, right, right. which could cause that, that mid-gut to rupture or, mm -hmm. or, uh, or tear it. Uh, so you don't want to do that. And, and right. likewise with this device, this has been around forever. I mean, the packaging looks like it's from the 1950s, um, but it is, the a, 60s. Yeah. it is a scoop device, uh -huh. um, which right. basically is the same type of method. Yeah. Now, there's nothing wrong with this method if you have under the right circumstances, right. but under the wrong circumstances, you're asking for trouble. Mm -hmm. Um, again, by agitating or tearing that tick. So, um, and, and one other observation is 
this is not a tweezer, <laughs> which everybody's recommending. Yes. So, and there's another one, I don't have one with me, but it's a tick twister, which is another scoop device that you use and you twist. But, you know, these, these mouth parts here, they're barbed. Mm -hmm. They're not threaded. So in my opinion, as well as the opinion of Dr. Tom Mather at University of Rhode Island, it's never necessary to twist a tick. Right. Why not just slide it under and scoop it and lift it? Right. Now that's fine if you're, like I said, under the right circumstances. Right. So, um, so let's talk about your, your solution. Yeah. So I'm, what I did was better. I basically, um, this is the Tiki's device. And I found that it is the most effective tool because it not only offers you these really sharp, um, pointy tweezers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a little hard to see that. Sorry about that. Well, we can, if you rotate it sideways and we can see how fine those tips are. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So these are very sharp. So you can easily get into a belly button. You can get into the corner of your eye. You can get into your ear uh, or any of those tight crevicey places. Now I also put a 45 degree angle on that sure. so that you can get it right down to the skin uh in an in a easily accessible fashion right rather than it being straight and then that limits your your accessibility mm -hmm. but the the nice thing about this is that that scoop method that i mentioned earlier which would be fine in certain circumstances is also included on the back but the difference here between the tickies and the tick spoon for example is simply the the footprint that it has right again you, you ticks don't <laughs> like to just go on a flat area of your body uh, that's the most easy to get to they like to go into tight moist crevicey spots mm -hmm. so the the more you can do to uh, for ease of use by making it a smaller uh, a head so to speak right the better so this this device is also stainless steel uh, doctors and vet veterinarians like it because they throw it in their autoclave mm -hmm and heat sterilize it and they reuse it. And you can't, you obviously can't do that with this. No. So they, they could, I mean, at home, people can boil it, for example. I mean, they, they could. Yeah, uh, it's not even necessary. What I would do yeah. is just use some hands. Well, you can use hand sanitizer or alcohol, uh -huh. even with a cotton ball. Uh, if you want to boil it, it's fine. It's not going to hurt it, yeah. uh, but it probably isn't even that necessary. Not you can either. even wash it with, a, with soapy water. Okay. Um, I recommend alcohol. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it should be should be just fine. Right. But, uh, you know, that's that's the best way to do it. And again, simple is better. Mm -hmm. Why complicate things? And then you have this whole population of people that swear by dish soap or using um, peppermint oil or Vaseline to smother the tick. Yeah. There's even a product out there that's a, a round sticky disc. And there's some guys saying, Put it over the tick, wait 30 minutes, and then rip it off, and it'll all come off. Ugh. Well, that, that, that may work. <laughs> the tick may come off, or using dish soap may irritate that tick so much that it backs out. Yeah. But the problem mm -hmm. is a barbed appendage that's stuck in your skin, and again, uh, they, <laughs> they secrete a glue-like substance that fills the spaces in between the barbs, like uh, it's called cementum. So it's like cement um, ticks until they're ready to come out naturally. Yeah. And they have an enzyme that breaks down this glue and, nec and causes necrosis on the, on the skin where it's biting. Right. Dissolves all that and allows it to pop off when it's fully fed. Yeah. Um, they're not ready to do that yet. Right. So they can't just pop out like a mosquito flies in and they say, oh, there's DEET here. Oh, I'm out of here. Well, Tick isn't that device. the old, uh, uh, I don't know if you call it a wives tale, but people hold a match to the tick, right? Was, yeah, that, the, was that the thing? thing. Yeah. The like to try to get it to come yeah. out. Yeah. Significant agitation as well as it's killing the tick. And right. if you're dying, I don't know, but I've heard that when people are in the process <laughs> of dying, they could vomit, they could... Yeah. lose control of their bowels yeah. and this is in a tick all that tick yucky tick juice okay so if so you, you 
uh, this is kind of combining one of your old, your other questions about DEET, or I'm sorry, about repellents and so, and so forth. Uh, DEET works great for flies and mosquitoes and gnats and all that stuff. I, I'm not sold on it for ticks because if you think about this tick that's doing this, oh, there's DEET here. Mm, I'm going to go over here. Ah, no DEET here. Right. I'm going to bite you. Right, where you and probably I, haven't put the DEET in, in certain places that... Well, that it takes I don't like know work. anybody that's going to spray a DEET product all over their <laughs> private areas. Uh, I've never done that, and I never probably will. Yeah. So that's, a, that's an area that ticks like to gravitate to. Right, cool. right. So, um, so the DEET, and, and especially the natural products, uh, I have not seen one that's really truly effective for ticks. Yeah. Yeah. The best thing for ticks would be the the, uh, the permethrin apparel, uh, the insect shield products, yeah. um, which which I love. And I tell people, you know, send in your your hunting stuff, send in your own clothing. Right. You can do that as well. So yeah, uh, yeah. But, a lot of people are not aware that we offer that service where people can send in their clothes. So you know, we we sell a variety of of clothing for the whole family, but. Um, yeah. hunters and stuff they've got their specialized clothing that they want to use and I know there's they, a lot out their, there they got their lucky deer t-shirt that they want to wear absolutely and doesn't you know which we will t-shirt. treat uh, and, and you would be surprised how much uh, in the way of like used clothing or worn clothing we get for that reason like people are like well yeah, I wish no, this people want to wear what they want to wear yeah. and uh, they don't necessarily um, uh, you know have the same tastes as the insect shield product yeah. brands at, at all times right, but, right. Uh, that, that's a good option that you can uh, yeah. work with your own clothing right so uh so bad and i'm jumping around quite a bit and i apologize but um for me uh i i kind of go in clean to the woods uh you know we are a, a group of recreationalists that don't uh want any kind of uh scent or odor on us i know yeah. permethrin is, is odorless that's one thing but uh i'm you know we're not going to spray cedar oil based products on our sure. uh or anything that might alert you know the 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 deer in the area that we're out there yeah. um, but um i think the best thing for people you know is the the permethrin clothing right 